This case study is entitled The Kumbalai, Leveraging Public and Private Partnerships Through Alternative Art Spaces. Alternative art spaces are catalysts in boosting art scenes. The drastic closure of art venues due to the COVID-19 pandemic that spread a year ago has affected the creative industry significantly. In recent months, measures have been taken by both the public and private sectors to revive culture and tourism. This is the Dakung Balay, one of the oldest privately owned mansions along Rizal Boulevard in Dumaguete City with an exhibition space providing an alternative venue for visual artists. This study investigates the nature of the initiative of private individuals behind the space that has received enthusiastic public support soon after it opened three months ago. Conducted during Art Seminar 1 and 2 under Foundation University Enhanced Learning Program, the first phase of the study observed the effects of pandemic on artists and local art scene. With decrease in mobility, activities and income of creatives, reduction of meaningful encounters between artists and audiences, and closure of art venues, both temporary and permanent research we have three main problems. Does the Kung Balai initiative have a clear vision and operational plan? What conditions are beneficial to such a cooperation to endure this crisis? And how will a public-private collaboration benefit the local art community? Our aims in this study are to identify and map key alternative art spaces in Lumagyari City, examine the efficacy of the Kung Balai initiative as an alternative art space, and to determine the scope and necessity of public support for the visual arts at a time of crisis. For us to achieve our aims, we gather a relevant perspective from key players in the business, tourism, and cultural sector, examine the initiative's physical and operational structures in relation with other alternative spaces in the city, and collect significant data from the initiatives in terms of revenues and capital. This study focuses on the Kumbalai Initiative and the spaces and activities of visual art community in Dumaguete City, which includes the Organic Magic and Atua shows, and the key stakeholders and artists included in these exhibitions. However, this study does not include the traditional art galleries and museums, events occurring after first two exhibitions presented at the Kumbalai Gallery, and the perspectives from guests, collectors, and critics. Our key concepts are the following, like an alternative art space, which in this study refers to a venue that represents artists and artworks where art can exist and showcase to any audiences. It is alternative to the traditional art galleries and museums. Public-private partnership, which refers to the long-term collaboration that involves both government agency and private sector companies partnering in projects that benefit the public community. Third is sustainability, then art gallery, art museum, art centers, non-profit and profit, and profitability. This descriptive case study uses qualitative and quantitative research approaches, and we use published online articles and journals, observations and notes, and non-directive interviews that lasted 10 to 20 minutes. We had a total of 10 participants in this research, two organizers of the initiative and one organizer slash artist, curator of the first and second projects of the initiative, and seven exhibiting artists in the Atua group show. Let's move forward to the discussion of art spaces in local community and in the Philippines. Now, here's a map of the art spaces in Dumaguete City. We can see 11 art spaces. They are classified in five. First are restaurants, which are Cree Restaurant, Kanya Bar and Restaurant, Cafe Memento, and Elima Cafe. Second are arts and craft stores such as Pinspired, Gatex, and Subida. These are commercially oriented art businesses dedicated to selling original artworks. Third is artist studio or gallery, which is the Maria Gallery that is privately owned and non-profit art space. And fourth is the private spaces for lease, which are Robinson's Mall and the Marketplace. Alternative art spaces are catalysts in boosting art scenes and creating new trends of viewing art. They are receptive to experimental art forms and emerging artists, and spaces for exchange and conviviality. They are indicators of cultural diversity and development. Here we have the Tamawan village of Baguio City as an alternative art space since 1998. In this slide, we look at the most important alternative art spaces in the Philippines. First was created in 1974, the Shop 6. Next, are surrounded by water and third space in 1998 the Baguio City Tamawan village and in 2000 the Green Papaya then in 2012 the 98B in Manila this is the first project of the Kumbalai initiative a solo show of first event Casaro on the 12th of December 2020 lasted until 24th of January 2021 it's a collaboration of private businesses the Pinspired and the Kumbalai with the help of Mr. Casaro acting as a co-organizer and curator of his own exhibit 
This is an experimental project of the initiative which then leads to a group show of 36 artists in Negros Oriental. Coming together in the title Atuo Art Exhibition opens 6th of February until 13th of March 2021. It's now a collaboration between private sectors Pinspired and the Kumbalai and a public sector the DOT or Department of Tourism. In this context, the Dakumbalai is much closer to the qualities of an alternative space which are under a private-public partnership. It is not for-profit, formal, in a repurposed building, and is dedicated for developing and presenting artworks for experimentation, exhibitions, or performance of artworks. Here are the collaborators of the Atua Art Exhibition. From the left, Dumaguete City Mayor Felipe Antonio Rimolio. Next is the SL Tevez Project Manager, Amy Jen Lee and the DOT Secretary, Ms. Bernadette Romolo Puyat, then the Vice President of SL Tevez Incorporated, Christina Tevez Cruz, and the co-organizer slash artist, curator of the Atua exhibition, Hersley Van Casero on the right, and not in this picture, Ms. Evgenia Yasperidunova, the owner of Pinspired, who that is also a collaborator of the Atua art exhibition. Now moving on to our data analysis methods, which we use the thematic analysis and profitability framework analysis. Results of our analysis shows that the impact of both exhibitions leads to growth of the local art market and it attracts more artists and the space becoming highly in demand. The visibility and character of the Kumbalai also shows that there is public accessibility even in times of COVID-19 pandemic and it's a well-known historical character. On the outcome of the Atua exhibition, although there's a contrasting ideas in the art gallery management and curation, it was still a successful representation of artists and artworks and that leads to the revival of the art scene and art community and gathering of artists. The outcome of Organic Magic Solo Show was unexpectedly successful that produced huge sales and directors positive feedbacks in the gallery. On the Dakumbalai Gallery space, its advantages is having a good appearance, ventilated and spacious structure that is free of use for exhibitions and related activities. Its advantages are only poor directives and operational structure such as lack of staffs and facilities. Howbeit, this became successful in promoting and improving the arts and culture in Dumaguete, which helped artists enhance community, community collaborations and initiatives and aggrandize the significance of the Dakumbalai, which also leads for artists and organizers hoping for the initiative to be permanent. The researcher applied a profitability framework to analyze the economic sustainability of the Dakong Balai initiative. Estimates were based on price lists, the minimum required personnel, and installation expenses incurred during the two exhibitions, as well as current lease rates. Figures on the revenue were taken from respondent interviews. The first exhibition generated a net profit of at least 180% whereas the second exhibition incurred a loss of about 20%. This study allowed a collection of data on the effects of the pandemic on the art scene in Dumaguete. The researcher was able to identify alternative art venues that remain operational post-lockdown. Apart from identifying the relationship of the visual arts sector with public and private patronage, the researcher was also able to identify conditions required for bilateral cooperation, not only to revive, but to sustain the local art community through an alternative art space. By applying the three components of the sustainability model to the current situation of Takong Balai, namely the economic, the environmental, and the social components, we're able to further deduce how the initiative may be profitable, but not sustainable. The lack of diverse income streams overshadows a weak operational design. Short-term engagements, the absence of a business model, two-thirds of volunteerism among its organizers, and a profit-oriented partner, apart from government proponents who do not consider art as a public good, are ingredients to an early burnout. The culmination of this study coincides with the reopening of local tourism in Negros Oriental. There has been recently a removal of the quarantine protocol for incoming residents and travelers to Dumaguete, and there is decidedly an upturn of businesses and a good tolerance for religious and social gatherings. The initiative of Takung Balai would benefit much from this influx of new visitors, possible new collectors, and a new audience. Takung Balai had a profitable beginning. However, its vision and operational structure remains ambiguous. On the one hand, it achieved its aim to generate income through a safe space for exhibition and artistic exchange. On the other, Patronage is short-lived, however enthusiastic the public may be. Like many alternative art spaces that have come and gone, Takung Balai is doomed to be a volatile endeavor unless it applies a strategic management design and builds on a fixed and long-term commitment 
with public stakeholders. The researcher recommends that the study may be used as a point of departure in examining in depth the coping mechanisms employed by alternative art spaces to endure crisis situations. The data and analysis of the profit framework may serve as a guide note to modeling budgets for alternative art spaces. Thank you for listening and a good day to you all.